Finally, we're going to take a look at the bonding in ethyne, which is also known as acetylene. It's just a common name. And what this is, is a carbon-carbon triple bond. So the structure, I have the triple bond. Now, remember carbon has to have four bonds. So what we have is a hydrogen on each carbon so that it has four bonds. So what you should spot here, kind of like we did with ethene, your first bond between the two atoms, that will be a sigma bond. It doesn't matter which of the three you choose as your first bond. Um, then your second and third bonds, those are pi bonds. So we have two pi bonds. And remember that a pi bond is when you have two p orbitals overlapping. So for one pi bond, we'll have two p orbitals with a side-to-side -side overlap. For the second pi bond, we'll have another two p orbitals with a side-to-side -side overlap. So what that means is each carbon must have two p orbitals. So now let's take a look at our starting orbitals for carbon and see how they undergo the hybridization. So as always with a carbon, and remember we're just looking at one of the carbons in acetylene and then we'll duplicate it for the second carbon. But if the carbon needs to have two pi bonds, we start with our S orbital and the three P orbitals. But this time, we're going to hold two p orbitals back from the hybridization. So what that means is only one s and one p orbital will undergo the hybridization. So when these two join, we have two orbitals coming together you'll get two hybrid orbitals out, and you mix an S and a P, you end up with an SP hybrid orbital. So here's what we're left with. Those two hybridized to give you two SP hybrids, and then the two P orbitals that you held back, those did not go into hybridization, and they're left over. So now when we put this together on a carbon, when you're Drawing your orbitals around the carbon, we'll start with the carbon. You want to space your hybrid orbitals out as far apart as possible. We have two things. So the farthest you can space those two things out are 180 degrees apart. So I'm gonna put one here. And remember, we usually don't draw the, the small lobe. And then we'll put another one here. Be a little bit careful because this can get confused with a p orbital with its two lobes, but this is actually two separate sp hybrid orbitals. Now for the p orbitals, those go on the carbon and we actually want them to be perpendicular to one another. So I'm going to put one right here, and one right here. They're 90 degrees apart. You'll often hear this termed as orthogonal p orbitals. So now what I'm going to do is take this picture that we have for one of the carbons and duplicate it so we have one for each of the carbons. All right, so now we have this twice. Uh, one thing that I didn't mention that's probably um, just important to note, a lot of times when I draw p orbitals, I don't shade in either lobe, um, just so it's just a standard p orbital drawing. Uh, in reality, each lobe has a different phasing, plus and minus. Uh, that's beyond the scope of what we're going to cover this semester, but um, just suffice it to say that a lot of times when you see p orbitals drawn, like on the molecule or up here, 
one lobe will be filled, one lobe will be um, unshaded, just so you can see the two phases of the orbital. So now that we have our two carbons, what will happen is we have a head-on overlap of the sp hybrid orbitals. So those will come together and that will form the carbon-carbon sigma bond. That's the first bond between the carbons. And then as those come together, the p orbitals that are parallel to one another will overlap. So the top lobe of this p orbital will overlap with this one. The bottom lobe of that p orbital will overlap with this one. Then we have our second p orbital where we get overlap. And this lobe will overlap with this one that it's parallel to. This lobe will overlap with this one. So when you're done, what you end up with is you know, this structure where they're all joined together. Um, just to show the overlap, sometimes you'll see kind of some shading that shows how all of these orbitals are overlapped. What you do want to make sure you note is even though we have four sites of overlap with the p orbitals, that still only represents two pi bonds because each pi bond has the top of the p orbital and the bottom of the p orbital overlapping. The one thing we're missing here is the bonds to the hydrogen. So we have hydrogen s orbitals. One will overlap with this sp. One will overlap with this sp. And that is the orbital picture for ethyne. So now the carbons, we have carbon sp, carbon sp overlap, and then two carbon p, carbon p overlaps. If you want to describe the CH bond, it's carbon sp overlapping a hydrogen s orbital. So a couple features of an sp hybridized carbon. The bond angle between the hybrid orbitals is 180 degrees. And the geometry is linear. 